Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now we've been talking about relations a lot and in this video I wanted to talk about a special type of relation, a relation that goes from a set to the same set. Right, so I'm going from a set A and I'm going to the same set A with this relation. And we, we uh, have a special terminology and special properties when we have this kind of relation. So suppose tau is a relation from the set A to itself, so from A to A. In other words, tau is a subset of the cross product A cross A. Then we say tau is a relation on A, okay? and we have a couple of different things. Um, first, we have a special relation of this type called the identity relation. I'm going to go ahead and do a little I A. The identity relation is true, um, well, I'll say, um, well, I'll say this about it. If A and B are two elements of the set A, then A is going to have this identity relation with B if and only if A and B are the same element. So A is B. Right? We call this an identity relation. In other words, I can define this identity relation in set notation. This is going to be all of the ordered pairs A, A. And that's for every element A and A. Right now, we we have identity relations that we're used to in uh, the real numbers, right? In real numbers or in integers or any kind of um, number set that we've talked about. Equals is an identity relation, right? So this is only true for two elements if the two elements on either side are actually the same element, right? I would never say negative 1 equals 5. I would only ever say negative 1 equals negative 1, right? This is what we call an identity relation. Now talking about tau, just some arbitrary relation on A, we say that tau is reflexive. Reflexive if and only if A tau A for every A in the set A. Right? In other words, a relation is called reflexive if the relation is always satisfied um, for two elements that are the same. Right? So equals, of course, is a reflexive relation. Uh, less than or equals uh, is a reflexive relation that we're used to, right? We know that, for example, 5 is less than or equal to 5, or for any number, doesn't need to be 5, uh, it's going to be less than or equal to itself. That's called a reflexive relation. Tau is called symmetric symmetric if and only if a tau b implies that b tau a and of course this goes in two directions because b tau a then implies that a tau b by the same argument so we call this symmetric right um, you could think of this as uh, if a tau b that means that a b is in tau and that means that b tau a so b a is also in tau so this could also be thought of as tau being its own inverse Right, if tau equals its own inverse, then tau is symmetric. Tau is called anti-symmetric if and only if if I have this a tau b and b tau a, that's only going to happen with an anti-symmetric relation if a equals b. Okay, so again, less than or equals would be an example of an anti-symmetric, right? If I have one number, le if a is less than or equal to b and b is less than or equal to a, then I must have that a and b are the same number. That's the only way that this relationship works in both directions. Okay, so that's called an anti-symmetric relation. And we say tau is asymmetric right so not the same as antisymmetric this is if and only if 
a tau b implies that b does not tau a and the other direction as well. So an example of this would be strictly less than, right? 2 is strictly less than 5, which means that 5 is not strictly less than 2. right? We call that an anti-symmetric relation. And tau is transitive, transitive, if and only if a tau b and b tau c implies that a tau c. So again, less than is an example of a transitive relation, right? 2 is less than 5, and 5 is less than 7, so 2 is less than 7, right? Now notice here, I'm only doing a, a conditional, not a biconditional. That's because, for example, um, a is less than 7, or sorry, let's say 2 is less than 7, uh, does not necessarily mean, let's say, I know that you know, 1 is less than 7, but 2 is not less than 1, right? I can't go in the left direction. It doesn't really make sense here. So this is just a one-directional statement, this transitive, OK? And this is a lot of terminology, but let's have some examples. Uh, I'm going to take this away, so make sure you've written this down or you have this handy. Uh, in the real numbers, for example, let's look at some of our common relations. I know that less than. This is not reflexive. Right? Not reflexive because, for example, 2 is not less than 2. Right? I would need every uh, element of the real numbers to be less than itself, which is not true. So this is not reflexive, but it is asymmetric. Right? I know that if uh, A is less than B, then I have the relationship that B is not less than A, and vice versa. If B is not less than A, that means it's bigger than A, so it must be on this side. Right. And I have a transitive property as well, of course. Right, and we talked about this one uh, when we talked about transitive. If A is less than B and B is less than C, then of course A is less than C. Now if I look at less than or equal to, this is reflexive. Right, we talked about this being reflexive already. Uh, we also talked about this being anti-symmetric. Right, if A is less than or equal to B and B is less than or equal to A, then A must equal B. And if A equals B, then we have that uh, anti-symmetric relationship. And this is going to be transitive as well. Right, if A is less than or equal to B and B is less than or equal to C, then A is less than or equal to C. And they could all be equal to each other with this one, couldn't they? Now my equals, this is an identity relation. So of course it's reflexive, and it's kind of trivially symmetric, and also transitive, right? Uh, it's symmetric because I know that um, if a tau b, then I know that b tau a, because a and b must be equal to each other by this relation. And it's transitive, because if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then clearly A is equal to C, right? Now let's do a little bit more of an abstract example. Um, let's say, instead of using real numbers, let's say that A, my set A that I'm going to talk about tau on, is equal to 1, 2, 3. And actually, I've been using tau a lot, so let's use sigma. Say my relationship sigma on A is equal to the ordered pairs 1, 1 and 2, 2. Now we want to know what kind of properties this relationship sigma um, satisfies. Well, it's clearly not reflexive. Well, 
while it is reflexive for the elements that are here, for sigma to be reflexive, I would also need to have the ordered pair 3, 3 in there, right? For a relation to be uh, reflexive, it needs to be reflexive for every element. Every element needs to be present as an ordered pair of itself, okay? Now, it is symmetric. right? If a tau b, then b tau a, and in all of the cases here where sigma is satisfied, the numbers are themselves, so 1 tau 1 implies that 1, or sorry, 1 sigma 1 implies 1 sigma 1. Of course, you know, uh, we have a very clear symmetrical relationship here. Uh, same thing with 2, 2. It's also anti-symmetric, because I do have the fact that if a sigma b and b sigma a, then a and b are equal, and that's trivially true again here. And I also have its transitive. Right? If a sigma b and b sigma c, then a sigma c. And that trivially is true here as well, because the only a, b's, and c's that I can plug in there are going to be either all 1's or all 2's. That's the only um, ordered pairs where sigma is satisfied. So this is, make sure you think about this, go back and make sure you see that um, you see why all of these are true or not true. And uh, this is kind of an abstract example to get us thinking in the right direction when we're talking about all of these properties. Now these properties are going to play an important role in the next section. Uh, we're going to talk about a special kind of relation that's going to require these properties. And we'll see you there.